Good morning, I hope you're all doing really well this beautiful December morning. We woke up to a gray chilly day. It looked and felt like snow and even though the forecast didn't show that we were going to get any, it still felt like the perfect day to gather some of our harvest from this past growing season and spend some time in the kitchen preparing a warm hearty winter dinner, which is a really great thing to do right before the crazy busyness of the next few days around Christmas. I found a recipe for traditional Cornish pasties which I thought sounded really interesting and delicious. They're basically a pastry turnover filled with vegetables and beef. We're going to make these pasties along with a generous helping of roasted root vegetables from the garden. Our pastry dough needs a chance to chill before it's ready to use, so it's the first thing we need to prepare so it's ready once we have all the rest of our ingredients gathered. You can use store-bought crust to cut your preparation time way down, but I decided it would be a little bit more special if I made it myself. The satisfaction in preparing foods with mostly homegrown ingredients is something I can't quite explain. It's always something I've wanted to accomplish, even during the years when all we had was a patio container garden. Over the past few years, we've grown a large amount of produce on our own property, experimenting with new varieties and storing away some of our favorites. We almost always have a few root crops lingering under the soil, only improving in sweetness and flavor each day they are subjected to more of our cold winter. The bull's blood beets pulled up easily out of the soil and are just about the right size for cooking. They should be tender, sweet, and delicious. And Benjamin loves a chance to use his tools, helping to fill up our baskets and buckets with freshly dug produce that was planted in the middle of this last growing season. The carrots, which were planted in with annual rudbeckias, needed a bit of coaxing. They were never thinned and needed a bit of help with a digging fork to loosen up the soil enough for them to come out. These root crops look like beautiful gems, little treasures coming up out of the cold ground. A stop at the chicken coop for an egg turned out to be a bit disappointing. The lack of sunshine from shorter days has reduced egg production to about a third of what I'm used to getting throughout the summer months. I could install and run an extra light to make them think the days are longer, but it's rarely something I worry about. I feel like they deserve a break too. So we gave them treats instead. Mealworms are their favorite. Rosemary is the only herb that I have wintered over consistently and well. This particular plant has been in this hanging basket for over two years and lives the majority of the year in this greenhouse, which isn't heated yet, but it seems to thrive and grow the perfect amount for me to harvest on a regular basis. We'll use this to flavor our roasted vegetables. We had a small root cellar installed in the back of our barn last year giving us the ability to store away some of our most used pantry ingredients like onions. This year we have candy and walla wallas. Also potatoes. I'm gonna use some beautiful huckleberry golds. We had a great harvest of that variety this year. The potatoes and onions were harvested on August 6th, then dried, cured, and eventually packed away for storage. We also have a few sweet potatoes left and plenty of garlic. We also really love butternut squash, so we've got three varieties wintering in here, but the honey nut variety, which produces fairly small individual size squash, is my favorite. It's a goal of mine to improve our process every year, learning how to extend our harvest season out in the garden and in our greenhouse, as well as learning new and maybe more efficient ways to store produce in the off season. 
Back in the kitchen, with the pastry still chilling in the refrigerator, we need to prepare both our pan of roasted vegetables and our pastry filling. Time spent washing the soil off our vegetables under lukewarm water, then peeling off all the outer skins is a relaxing sort of mindless activity to me. While I'm peeling away, my mind fills up with all sorts of things, like projects in the garden, what I want to plant in certain spots, what I can improve on for next year. I keep a bucket in the sink to save all the peels and tops that are safe for the chickens to eat. In this case, everything is great except for the peels from the potatoes. For roasted vegetables, I use a mix of different things depending on what I have on hand at the moment. The beautiful thing about that is that it will taste slightly different every time I make it based on what fresh ingredients and herbs I have available to me. I think it works great to chop them all up into bite-sized pieces, about one and a half inches or so. Now some amazingly fragrant crushed garlic, a generous drizzle of wonderful high quality olive oil, a bit of salt and pepper, then a good stir before spreading them out on a pan. When using rosemary, I prefer to lay four or five sprigs on top of the vegetables instead of mixing it in. Because rosemary is so incredibly forward in flavor and scent, this allows the vegetables to take on the essence of the herb while still being able to taste the flavors of the vegetables. And isn't that a gorgeous sight? That is a pan full of beautiful vegetables right there. You'll also notice that I keep the red beets to one side for two reasons, really. The first is that beets tend to turn lighter colored vegetables a pink color, and I like everything to maintain their natural color. And Erin doesn't really care for beets, so I don't mind keeping them off to the side. They go in a 400 degree oven and roast for 30 minutes, stirring them about halfway through. The pastry filling is quite easy to make. It's a mixture of finely chopped onions. I usually add a bit more onion than the recipe calls for, some chopped potatoes, chopped carrots, and some sirloin steak cut into bite-sized pieces. Our beef is organic and grass-fed, raised out at my parents' farm, and it's always wonderful. A sprinkle of salt and pepper, dried thyme, which I didn't have on hand. I used a little bit of Italian seasoning instead. After allowing the dough to rest for 10 minutes on the counter, it needs to be split into four equal pieces and each piece rolled into roughly an eight inch circle. Then a generous spoonful of filling goes on one side of the circle and one tablespoon of butter on top of the filling. Now the recipe didn't state this, but I would recommend using an egg wash, which is one egg whisked together with one tablespoon of water around the perimeter of the circle to help it close and seal really well. So you fold the pastry in half over the filling and pinch the edges together with a fork. They look so neat and tidy and brushing them over with the egg wash once they're all together will give them a nice golden shiny look once baked.
The pastries bake for about 45 minutes in a 350 degree oven. I do try to be as efficient as possible in the kitchen, cleaning as I go and tackling as many of the dishes used in preparation as possible before the meal is ready to serve so there aren't as many to tackle after dinner. It makes me feel less hurried and more peaceful when we sit down to eat together to see a semi-clean kitchen. In this case, which is fairly rare when I'm cooking dinner, I even had enough time to go feed the chickens the leftover scraps and spend a few minutes out there in their company. One of the more peaceful things a person can do, I think. After being outside, I can't even describe the smell in the kitchen when I came back in. It's what I would prefer my kitchen smell like all the time in the fall and winter months. Both dishes came out beautifully. The roasted vegetables had the perfect texture and subtle rosemary flavor, and I'm absolutely over the moon with the pastries. The crust was flaky, it was tender, it baked up perfectly on the top and the bottom, and because of the incredibly high amount of butter that went into it, it basically just melted in your mouth. The beef was tender and cooked through as well. A highly successful day in the kitchen. Honestly, not all recipes go exactly to plan, but any day being able to draw from and use things from your own garden is a day well spent, especially when the recipes turn out to be such great ones. I will include links to both recipes down below this video should you want to give them a try. And I wish you all a relaxed, peaceful, and very Merry Christmas.